Hello dear viewers, welcome again to YGCBD. In this video, we will see three more features of the program. First, I will show you how the program updates everything if the cost of a material changes. Next, we will analyze the impact of delay in completion time on the net profit and risk margin, and how to adjust the unit prices to come up with an acceptable amount of profit. Finally, I will show you how easy it is to calculate labor and equipment unit prices only, by excluding material costs. In this example video, we will consider the tender price prepared by a contractor for the construction of a multipurpose hall in Addis Ababa. Most of the bill of quantity has been previously recorded on the tender pricing page of YGCBD to make the video shorter. I will just register the last title and two work items to show you the process. As you can see, double-clicking on the last cell in the work items column launches the organizer dialog box. Then we select add or edit title option and write the subtitle of the next works. Observe that whenever we click on a work item, it will be automatically registered with its unit of measurement and unit price. And when we provide the quantities, the project cost is constantly updating. With this step, we have finished the preliminary tender price. Let us now see how easy it is to handle any changes. In this illustration, the contractor had initially assumed reinforcement bars will be available at 130 bare per kilogram. However, last-minute information from the market has revealed that the cost has increased to 156 bare per kg. All the contractor needs to do is to go back to the data input page and edit the relevant cost. When we go back to the tender pricing page, we will find that all the project calculations have been revised accordingly. Now it is time to take a closer look at the detailed overhead costs and the expected net profit amount. Until now, the unit prices were being calculated on the 30% overhead and profit factor we assumed at the beginning. We can see that, if the contractor is able to complete the project smoothly in the four months stipulated in the bidding documents, the 30% OHP margin would mean a net profit and risk margin of about 340,000 burr. However, the contractor wanted to assess the financial risks involved if the project is delayed by two months. Since recurrent costs, like staff salaries and utility costs, are directly related to completion time. The bidder can see that the delay will reduce the profit and risk margin to nearly 90,000 burr. He thinks this is not acceptable and decides to raise the overhead and profit factor to 33%. Now, the project will have almost 215,000 burr profit if finished in 6 months, and about 470,000 burr if finished on time. Note that, if required, the details of the different types of overhead costs can be edited according to the contractor's site organization standards and the particular project's nature. The contractor is satisfied with this result, thus he goes back to the bid organizing page and as a final step, rounds the unit prices to whole numbers.
This is very important since it will make transferring to the hard copy easier and helps to avoid the risk of misplacing the decimal points. The summaries of each subtitle can be accessed by clicking on the Show Summary button. The following part of the video deals with the use of YGCBD in the construction stage. Let us assume that the contractor has won the bid and wants to outsource the labor works. First, he opens the basic information dialog box and sets the subcontractor's profit and overhead margin at say, 15%. Then, he excludes the material costs from the calculation by double-clicking on the title of the materials column. As we can see, the unit price list has been adjusted and the total project cost has also been revised. He can also get the subcontract cost for selected items by excluding the other works. That is all I have for you today. I will come back soon with another video showing additional features of YGCBD. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.